Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God. You alone are my rock and my most blessed redeemer. Holy Spirit, show up and show out. Do what you do best. Use me, for I am but a servant yearning to be used by you. Let someone be delivered, set free and healed. God, remove Calvin out of the way and let your people see you. And it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. Trinity, I stand today um, in a bittersweet moment. As I delivered this sermon, my final sermon, in the role of youth pastor, it has been a blessing serving in this village. And I'm going to try not to cry. You are amazing. There is no place like Trinity United Church of Christ. To the pastor and the pastoral team and to the entire village, I love you. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. To my babies, know that Reverend Jones is always going to be in your heart. There was a word from the Lord today. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 15 and I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. So those of you all who have your tablets, your iPhones, come on somebody. Amen. Your laptop, your amen, Bible, whatever device you have, please turn with me to John 5, verses 1 through 15. And it reads as follows, a familiar text. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda, which has five porches. In there lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. But Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat and walk. My God, I feel like preaching already. At once the man was made well and he took up his mat and began to walk. My God. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them. The man who made me well said to me, take up your mat and walk. And they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. But later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see you have been made well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. Verse 15, the man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For the time that I have with you, Trinity, I would like to place a tag upon this text entitled, I've been standing in my own way for too long. I've been standing in my own way for too long. Beloved, I do not mean to burst your bubble today, but sometimes we give the devil way too much credit. We sometimes give the devil more power than he has. We blame the devil for every bad thing that happens in our lives. We blame the devil for every wrong decision that we make. When sickness comes, what do we do? We blame the devil. When our plans do not go our way, we blame the devil. When we are stagnant in liminal seasons, we blame the devil. When we are stuck in one place, we blame the devil. When we make mistakes, we blame the devil. When we burn our hand while cooking, we blame the devil. Y'all want to hear Reverend Jones? Yeah. When we continue to deal with a low down boyfriend and girlfriend, we blame the devil. When that husband is acting funny and that wife is acting and funny and you know you should have been left them. We blame the devil. Church, y'all don't want me to preach, but I'm going to do it all by myself. Church people have given too much power to the devil that the enemy has become our God. 
We've given so much power to the devil that we cannot see what the real problem is. Maybe, just maybe the problem is me. Maybe, just maybe the problem is Calvin. Maybe, just maybe I'm the person holding me back. Maybe, just maybe, the person who has been keeping you from your destiny is you. Maybe, just maybe, the person who has been putting me in a box is me. Maybe, just maybe, it's my own toxic ways. Maybe, just maybe, it's my own bad habits. Maybe, just maybe, I've been holding my own self back. And I don't know about you, but we want to be free from past hurts. We desire to walk into new seasons of our lives. We sit and wait for the hands of time to push us into new chapters. We desire to walk into seasons where gloom turns to joy. We desire to walk into seasons where sadness turns into happiness. Do I have a witness today? We desire to walk into seasons where our dreams become reality. However, church, sometimes we allow fears to make us surrender to what has always been. And we begin to say it is not possible to walk into a new season. We begin to question our abilities. Maybe, just maybe, you have been standing in the way of your own blessings. One writer says, there is greater comfort in known misery and discomfort of unknown possibility. Can I say that again? One writer says, there is greater comfort in known misery and discomfort in unknown possibilities. Our fears tell us that we cannot change. Our fears tell us that we will not prosper if we move from where we are. Our fears tell us that the familiar is better than taking a risk. God, I feel like preaching. Our fears tell us that things cannot get better. Our fears become our only truths. But can I prophesy to you today, you may be in a liminal season and you're asking God, what is next? God, I know you're pushing me and calling me to greater, but God, I don't know what's on the outside. I don't know what's on the other side of this, but I got news for you. God is calling you to stretch out. God is calling you to increase your faith, whatever your desire may be, whatever is in your spirit. God is saying that greater is calling your name. Somebody ought to put in the comment section, greater is calling calling my name and I refuse to allow my own thoughts, my own opinions, come on somebody, my own paddles in my mind to hold me back any longer. I prophesy that God wants to free you from the chains that have been holding you down. God wants to free you because there is more. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. Your ladder is getting ready to be greater than the former. You got to tell the enemy, I will not allow myself to hold me back any longer. Yeah, it is like sometimes our own fears keep us from moving into what God has for us. Beloved, this brings me to the text today. There was a man, a man who was trapped by society, a man who was trapped in a society that disvalues his life, a man who is differently abled, a man whose physical condition has defined his current situation all of his life, a man who has been stagnant for 38 years, a man who has settled for the status quo, a man who has decided that his current situation will always be his permanent residence. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but some of you all feel as if your permanent resident will always be, that where you are is where you will always be. But I got news for you. It doesn't have to be that way. This man who is uniquely able lies by the pool in Jerusalem called Bethsaida, interpreted as the house of mercy. This man was at a centralized location where healing was to take place. He was at a place where healing was to be expected. For the word says here where those who had many conditions and others who were differently able, they would come here. However, this man for 38 years had been stuck in a seemingly perpetual season of gloom and despair. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. Some of you all feel as if you've been where you are a little too long. It doesn't mean that the place hasn't blessed you. It doesn't mean that you have not given your all to that place. It doesn't mean that you have not built relationship with so many people, but there comes a point in your life where you hit the ceiling 
And God says, I need you to move because I have another assignment for you. Ah, as you hear the sound of the train, I hear the Lord saying, I'm calling you to another place. As you hear the sound of the train, the horn, God has said, I'm calling you to another place. Can you not hear the alarm in the spirit? Can you not hear God saying, come, come, you got to move from where you are. It doesn't mean that you have not, to, hallelujah, been developed in the season that you're in. But God is saying, I'm calling you to another place. However, in this literary pericope, it states that Jesus was in the area. Because of the Passover and a Jewish festival, he sees this man. Y'all don't want to hear me. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus knew that the man had been lying there a long time, Reverend Rochelle, Reverend Jasmine. And I, and I asked the question, how did Jesus know that the man had been lying there a long time? How did Jesus know that the man had been in that season for a long time? Maybe because Jesus was Emmanuel, God in the flesh. Jesus was all knowing. Maybe because Jesus was God. Come on, somebody. But maybe, just maybe, because this man was uniquely abled and lying by the pool for a long time, he had sore that were visible. Maybe, just maybe, you could see the condition. Uh, I don't really know how, but I do know that uh, Jesus could tell that this man had been there a long time holding himself back. Jesus asked him one question, do you want to be made well? And, and as I uh, 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 discuss this text, I'm not negating those who are uniquely abled and not trying to brush over the condition and not trying to overlook ableism. Ableism is real. And sometimes people don't understand that healing may not be immediate, but sometimes healing is over time through support, through mental health, through hospital, through medication. I'm not saying that healing is always going to be immediate. So as I try to exegete this text, please know that I'm not negating those who are uniquely abled and not trying to dismiss or overlook that sometimes you may be, hallelujah, with the condition for quite some time. And your reality may not necessarily look like this man, but metaphorically speaking, I use this text to say that God is able to move you out of where you are. Jesus asked him the question, do you want to be made well? And he responds, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred. He said, as I attempt to make my way to the pool, can you see the man crawling, trying his best to get in the pool so that when the angel stirs the pool, he would try to get some type of healing. But he says, as I try to make my way to the pool, someone steps in front of me. And this brings me to my first point, and I promise you I'm going to try to be in the way and out of the way. Number one is your next move is not going to happen unless you take a risk. Your next move is not going to happen unless you take a risk. Saints, on Sunday we sing and we dance and we shout about how mighty God is. We sing about a God who can do the impossible. We sing about a God who is a burden barrier. We sing about a God who's a heavy load sharer. We, we sing about a God who can turn water into wine, who can save your soul, who can open doors, who can bring you out, who can deliver and set you free. But Monday through Saturday, do we really believe what we sing and shout about on Sunday. Monday through Saturday, we are afraid to take a risk. For faith is nothing but taking a risk into the unknown while trusting God. For the word of God says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's not what you see, but it's what you believe in your spirit. Take a risk. But it's easier to wait on others. It's easier to wait on someone else to drop the blessings into your lap. It's easier to expect someone else to push you out of where you are. But I got news for you today, Trinity. If you're waiting for someone else to pull you out of your season, you're going to be waiting a long time like this man. God is saying, I'm calling you to take a risk. I know it may not feel good. I, I know the unknown is not easy. I know you may be worried about your money. You may be worried about how you're going to pay your bills if you take this risk. You may be worried about the friends you may lose or how you may have some distance between those who you've built relationship with. But God is saying, when I called you, I called you to something greater. When I called you, I called you to a greater purpose. And the Lord is saying, before the foundations of the world, I knew you. When you were in your mother's womb, I knew 
knew who you were and I was going to call you as a prophet to the nations. I knew that I was going to call you to a prophet to the world. So you cannot wait for others to take you out of this season. God is calling you to say yes. Will you say yes? Will you say yes to God? Will you say yes, I'll go. Yes, I'll preach. Yes, I'll sing. Yes, I'll do your will. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know how it's going to look. But God is saying, if you trust me, I'll meet you there. If you trust me, I'll be waiting for you in the next season. If you trust me, I'm going to be there with open arms. If you trust me, I will go before you and make provision. Is there anybody watching me that says, I got to give God a yes. I got to give God a yes for my next season. I got to give God a yes because if God made me a promise, I believe that God will do it. Can't wait for anybody else. That's why Jesus asked the man, do you want to be made? Well, I feel like preaching. I got a little help in here today. <laughs> oh, do you want to be made? Well, in other words, Jesus asked the man, are you ready to take a risk? Are you ready to get out of your own way? And the man responds, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool. Every time I attempt to, to, to get in the pool, someone else gets ahead of me. In this moment, y'all, because of his own insecurities, because of the situation, because of his own fears, the man could not see that the divine was inviting him to participate in a new opportunity. He, he could not see that the divine was inviting him to take a risk. He could not see that the divine was inviting him to see a new way out. He could not see that the divine was trying to take him higher. And saints, I encourage you today, those who are listening under the sound of my voice, that you can no longer bring other people into the equation of your life. It's time to take a risk. You got to take people out of the equation and add faith plus God plus Jesus. Faith plus God plus Jesus equals a new season. Oh God, I feel like preaching. Some may seemingly step in front of you. Some may seem to be getting blessed, but God is saying you got to break the spirit of comparison off of your life. I got news for you. You can no longer compare yourself to others because what God has for you is for you. Oh, I don't know about you, but God has something that that only you can do, that only you can fulfill. Uh, get your eyes off of everybody else. Uh, get your eyes off of Tom, Dick, and Harry uh, and say, God, I got to fulfill what you have for me, uh, regardless of what people say. Uh, God has something in store for you. Uh, don't, don't, don't look at others. Uh, don't worry about your haters. Uh, oh, I'm so tired of, amen, hearing sermons about your haters. Uh, I want you to know that God has said, don't even worry about them uh, because your haters are getting ready to see what God is about to do. God is inviting you to take a risk because if you really want to move into this next place, as Jesus tells the man, you have to trust me. You have to want to be made well. Stop talking yourself out of your blessing. Stop talking to people who have small minds. Stop talking to people who have limited realities because when you try to share something, they won't even be able to comprehend because God has shown you something that limited people will never be able to fully comprehend. God is saying, now surround yourself with people who know, amen, who you are, with people who know that you have something in you that's greater. You have a nation in you. You have a world in you. You have a ministry in you. You have a book in you you. You have a new organization in you. You have a counseling ministry in you. God said, begin now not to hang around other folks who will try to block your blessings. Take that risk. Beloved, uh, the text goes on to say that Jesus responds and tells the man, stand up, take your mat and walk. And the man was made well. Ooh, glory to God. This brings me to point two. When you move out of God's way and your way, the world will see the very thing that God delivered you from. When you move out of your way and God's way, the world will see the very thing that God delivered you from. Some of us have limited ourselves. Some of us have been living in a box constructed by other people who do not want to see you thrive. But when you truly obey the one who created you, when you move out of God's way, when you get out of your own way, you will then know that it's not a coincidence that I'm about to be blessed. For you are God's child. 
The ancestors are cheering for you. The elders have been praying for you. Destiny is calling your name. Greater is calling you forth. You have to know that God is getting ready to show the world that I can deliver you out of where you are. Although I may have been here a long time, although you may have been in your season a long time, God is saying regardless if it's been three or four or five years, 10 years, 20 years or 38 years, there is more for you to do. And God is saying, when you get out of your way and get out of God's way, you're going to begin to look at the world and say, look what God has done. Look at the map that I have to hold. God says, that's why I want this man to carry the map, to remind people of the very condition that had held him down. And now as he walks around, he's going to show the Pharisees because they, they were not fair, you see. And the Sadducees, because they were sad, you see. <laughs> he said, I want you to show the Pharisees and the Sadducees that look at me now. The very thing that has been holding me down. You've been coming to the pool for years and seeing me there. But I want you to know that the very thing that I thought was my permanent residence is now my testimony. God, I, will, I wish I could talk. Yeah, the very thing that you tried to put over me, God said, watch me now. This is my mat to show you that God delivered me from it. And I'm almost done. The text says that it was on the Sabbath. Glory to God. So the Jews, the Jews said to the man who had been cured, it is a Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry the mat. But he answered that Jesus, amen, there was a man that told me, glory to God, to take up my mat. He didn't know it was Jesus at that time. But later in the temple, Jesus appeared to him and said it was me that told you to take up your mat and walk. And he said, go, you've been made well, sin no more. And this man told the Jews, this is my last point. Some may not like it, but do not go back to the season that broke you. Some may not like it and they may not understand, but do not go back to what broke you. You went through hell. Took you a long time to get out of that relationship with that guy and that girl. Took you a long time to get out of that marriage. And God is saying, don't go back to what broke you. I don't care what people say or how they try to label you. God said, don't go back. You scuffled and scuffled that long. You prayed in the midnight hour. You fasted. You had tears screaming down. Why would you go back to what broke you? God is saying, if God has delivered you, why should you be bound? Ah, isn't it funny? Amen. That the religious people were not happy for this man. My God, the religious people who were supposed to have faith. It says that instead of them being happy about this man, it says that they were more concerned about traditionalism and customs. And they said, why are you carrying your mat on the Sabbath? Y'all don't want to hear Reverend Calvin, but y'all about to give me a little more time because uh, I got to preach this thing one final time. Uh, yes, they were more concerned about traditionalism and concerned about a man holding up politics uh, that they did not see that God had removed this man out of a season of stagnation. I, and I got news for you today. There will be people who won't be happy yeah, when you begin to get out of your own way. Yeah, there will be people who will not be happy yeah, that you are no longer holding on to the status quo. Yeah, but I got news for you, Trinity. Yeah, hey, Lord, he that has begun a good work in you is able to complete it. I wish I had a witness here. This man had been being by the pool a long time. Can't you see this man had given up on hope? This man had said there's no way that I can come out of this. But there came a man named Jesus and that man told Jesus, hallelujah to God I've been here too long but Jesus told that man you can't hold yourself back any longer.
Uh, I don't know uh, who I'm talking to today, uh, but sometimes uh, we can be our own worst enemy. Uh, so this is what I need you to do. Uh, you need to get in the mirror uh, and put your hands on your hip. Uh, look yourself in the face uh, and say, self, uh, I'm getting ready to move. Uh, say, self, uh, I'm going to get out of my own way. Uh, I know what people said about me. Uh, I know I went through some traumatic things in my childhood. Uh, I I know your father said you won't gonna be nothing. I know your mother said you won't gonna be nothing. But oh Zion, look yourself in the face and say, self, you better get ready to move. I think about that song that says, I command my hands to worship the Lord. I command my ears to worship the Lord. I command my eyes to worship the Lord. I know I'm getting ready to go to the unknown. But one thing about it, I can't allow myself to hold me back any longer. You ought to put in the comment section, it's time for me to move. For there is no barrier that you can't break. There is no book that you can't write. There is no policy that you can't change. And there is no heaven that you can't reach. There is no album that you can't release. There is no sermon that you you can't preach. God, I'm setting you up. There is no room that you can't enter in because the Bible declares that I'm more than a conqueror. For the word of God says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You got to get up now and take up your mat. Don't keep having a pity party, but tell yourself, self, I am beautiful. Self, I'm created in God's image. I have the Imago day when God scooped down like a mother. He scooped down in the clay and breathed the breath of life in it. And we became a living soul. So you have the fingerprint of the divinity. You have divinity flowing through your veins. Don't let no devil, don't let no hater, and don't let yourself tell you that you are nobody. But you ought to say, I am somebody. I am. A child of God. Yes, yes, I am. Say what you will, do what you want to do, but I know who my father is. I know who my mother is. God is my bridge over trouble water. God is my Jehovah Jireh. God is my Jehovah's his canoe. God. God is my all in all. He's my everything. He's my bread when I'm hungry. God is my water when I'm thirsty. So I refuse to let you hold me back because if God did it before, God is able to do it again. If God did it before, God is able to do it again. That's why as I go to my seat, that's why God in the Hebrew Bible told the children of Israel to never forget that it was me that brought you out of Egypt. Tell your children and your children, children, that if I brought you out then, I can do it now. Nothing is impossible but you got to get out of your own way. You've been in your way too long. And Trinity, I've been in my way too long. But I'm grateful for this stop to be able to bless you. But now I have to move. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our liberator, in the name of our healer, in the name of the God who will forever keep me connected to you, I love you. Get out of your way and get out of God's way. You've been where you are long enough. God bless you. At this time, we've come to the point in our service where we offer Christ to those who are looking for a church home. We would love to have you a part of this village called Trinity United Church of Christ, the place that we believe is the greatest church on this side of the Jordan. You will see on our screen, an email address for the new members. If you would like to become a new member through Christian experience or baptism, 
We ask at this time that you would email that address and let them know that you would love to be a part of this village called Trinity United Church of Christ. God's people, we pray that you have a magnificent week, that the Lord blesses you real good and keeps you as you prepare to go throughout this new week. And now we say, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. Make God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto each one of you until we meet again. Go in peace, have a wonderful day, and God bless you as we say amen and ashe together. God bless you. Trinity, I stand on the cusp of a new chapter. Um, the staff at the Memorial Church at Harvard University has recruited me as an associate minister, and I have accepted that call. This is bittersweet, and I would be remiss if I did not express my deep gratitude to the village. Um, over five years ago, I had the opportunity to intern at Trinity United Church of Christ. You didn't know me, I didn't know you, but I fell in love with you all. When I walked into the sanctuary and heard the sounds of the men's chorus, the women's chorus, the sanctuary choir, Waleka, Little Warriors for Christ, I fell in love with you. When I heard the powerful, powerful, prophetic messages of the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III, I fell in love with you. When you welcomed me with open arms, I fell in love with you. Um, Trinity, you have no clue how much I love you all and how these past five years and past three years in my role has been so transformative. Your hugs, your conversations, your encouraging words have truly influenced my life. There is no place like Trinity. Trinity is where I learned to deepen my prophetic preaching. Trinity is where I learned to really focus on the foot on the ground ministry. It was here that I learned that I am unashamedly black and unapologetically Christian. I will never forget you all. To the seasoned saints, I will never forget you all. To the young adults, I will never forget you all. To my babies, to the young people, to the children, you are forever in my heart. No matter where I go, I'm one phone call, one Facebook post, one message away. And I must say to the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III, thank you for giving this low country, Southern, storefront, Pentecostal, country, <laughs> boy a chance. Thank you to Reverend Stacy, to Reverend Rochelle, to the entire pastoral team, to the deacons, to every ministry, to every youth servant leader. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for your commitment. I hope that I did something along the way to bring joy and peace. I love you all so much and there's nothing you can do about it. I solicit your prayers as I enter into this new chapter of my ministry, life and career. Trinity, I love you. And remember that when the Spirit of God moves, when you have a praise break, when you run and dance and shout, maybe you would think of Reverend Calvin. I love you. I love you. I love you.
here. I'm gonna move over here because I got the good Reverend Calvin Jones here. He got a whole bunch of family here. So they want to say hi to their family back in North Carolina. So here, I'm turning this over to you. They still coming. He got a whole bunch of people. Tell them what happened yesterday. Tell them who we got here with you and all that good stuff. The mic is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Jasmine. I am just so elated, so excited, so humbled, so grateful. Yesterday was uh, my ordination into the United Church of Christ, an installation service here at Trinity United Church of Christ as a pastor of children and youth. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited because I have my mother all the way from Garrysburg, North Carolina. Say hello, mama. Hello. I love her so much. I also have my family from Connecticut. I'm the pastor of Body of Christ, Pastor Rosa Davis. Say hello. God bless you, hello. And Pastor Merritt. God bless you. And Auntie Deborah, say hello. Hello. And I also have Minister Biddle, say hello. Hello. I also have my aunt from New York. Where's Yolanda? I have Yolanda and her daughter, my cousin Monty, and my cousin Tammy and Regina. Come up a little bit. Say hello to everybody. Hi. I am just so grateful and thankful that they thought of little old me to come here to experience this move of God. God bless you. All righty. Thank you all so much for coming. And we